Good afternoon, class. So today we are going to discuss the principles of high quality assessment. And here our learning objectives for today's discussion. So at the end of the discussion, you are able or expected to recall the taxonomy of educational objectives. Second, formulate learning objectives in your desired subject matter. And third, you are able to value the importance of clear and appropriate learning targets. Now let's discuss the teacher-made test. So most of the tests the students take are teacher-made tests. So it means that the teachers design them. So the tests are associated with the grades on report cards. They help. So the purpose of the test is to measure the student's progress or to assess the student learning. So it is the responsibility of the teacher to give feedback about the test of the students. So by telling the teacher whether that student, he or she pass or she keeping up with the class or needs an extra help. So, tips in constructing tests. Number one, test should be balanced among the following. We have the short answer and paragraph answer. And it should be balanced if you are going to use words, pictures, maps, and diagrams. And for the easy and difficult questions. Factual knowledge or application of knowledge and the knowledge and skills. So, as much as possible, class, the test Question should be given within meaningful context. Meaning to say, class, that is just like the food. Dapat nagyud siya unod or useful gyud siya when you are going to have a test with your students. So I have here the example of the test. So if your test class is just you are going to name the continents and the oceans, so that is considered as the poor test. So it is better that you are going to name the continents and oceans shown on the map. So how? By providing a clear map with continents and oceans numbers. So from that test class, the your student will enjoy or ma-appreciate nila ang imuhang test. Another example, we have marked the following is true or false or write T if the statement is true and F. If the statement is false so from that test class that is considered as poor test so how to make your test better by Kanisha mark the following if true or false for the false statements rewrite them to make them true so you, it's just like you are making a quiz or a test that is something meaningful or can I measure good nimo how these students uh, learn from your discussion. Kanang something na siya'y pagka, na siya'y, na siya'y gamay nga twist ba ang imuhang test? Number two, students should not be penalized with a low mark because they are weak in reading or writing. So, this student may be assisted in one several ways. So, it doesn't mean, class, that if your student uh, not good at reading or writing, so she will receive from you a very low or gamay nga grado. So as a teacher class, you are going to assist that kind of student. So how? Number one, the teacher might go over the test beforehand and read and explain each question. Number two, tests could be done in small groups or with partner. So, for example, class na kay bright ng estudyante, imo na siyang iparis ato mga hinay ng mga student. And then, letter C, the teacher might form a small group during the test and quietly read each question with the group, allowing time for students to write their answer or give the answer orally. So, from this kind of assistant class, it is like a group activity or group discussion. So, there is a collaboration. So, for those who are mga low student class, so, ma slowly, ma, in, uh, ma develop ang ilahang self-confidence and of course, class, ma practice po ang ilahang reading and writing skills. Letter D, in some cases, it may be appropriate for some students to have a tutor or a coach them 
beforehand. So this kind, uh, this kind of assistant class is if if a teacher have ample time, so have a vacant time, so you can uh, coach or assess the student. No, dulo animo siya sa imuhang vacant time, or it is much better nga imuha siyang i advice to have a tutorial sa ilaha. According to Stegens, the purpose of classroom tests vary. But prior to constructing any test, teachers should first identify the kinds of instructional decisions that will be made based on the result, test results and the kinds of score-based inferences needed to support those decisions. So, actually, class, before the teacher have a discussion of his or her topic, so there should be or there is a pretest. So out from that pretest results class, that is the basis of the teacher of what kind of instructional strategies or materials should be used for those or for these kinds of students. We have here the five pitfalls to avoid in constructing tests. So don't forget this one class. So number one, unclear directions. Second, ambiguous statements. Kanang libugay nga statement. Number three, unintentional clues. Katagka-clue nila unintentionally. And then four, complex phrasing. Kanang taas ka ayong imuhang statement. Then libug na hinuon. Difficult siya nga phrase. And the number five, do not use difficult vocabulary. So let's discuss the formative assessment tools. But before that class, remember that there should be no surprise student evaluation or quiz. And then if you are going to give them an activity, so the students should be aware of the evaluation criteria and the procedure. And of course, uh, they have the rule for the evaluation process and give them regular feedback how they are doing. So, informative assessment tools class, so the DepEd are recognized as an instrument to evaluate the student's understanding. So, these are the kinds of assessment tools for the formative. We have quizzes, follow-up questions, peer assessment, group discussions, games like puzzle, and last, the progress chart. So, this kind of tools class is used by the teachers for the immediate feedback or discussion to the students for the improvement of teaching and learning process. So take note class that formative assessment need not to be written all the time. Why? Because actually class we have here an uh, example the follow-up question. You can ask to the student after your discussion like um, does it make sense to you or do you have any questions regarding our discussion or you can uh, ask someone to volunteer for to sum up your discussion so from that class there is no need to record or to yeah to record that kind of tools or assessment so now let's proceed to the clarity of learning targets. So remember class that your learning target should be clear for the basis or for your guidance of your assessment. So we have number one, determine the specific learning targets and their sequence for instruction. Number two, a standard may be composed of one learning target. Number three, each learning target typically is a subunit which includes letter A, contents. So, so your learning target should, uh, you have to know what the students must know. And then second, the skills, what the students must be able to do. Next, letter C, the assessment for learning that will be used to keep the students in for of their progress and to design next steps for instruction. Letter D, the assessment of learning should cover the content for the entire unit. And letter E, the lesson designed to teach students the learning targets. 
Clarity in learning targets means that the learning targets, like the knowledge, skills, and products, need to be stated in behavioral terms or terms that denote something which can be observed through the behavior of the students. Okay, class, remember that Setting clear and achievable targets is the starting point for creating assessment. So in other words, you need to determine what exactly your student should know or to be able to do. So if you do not set clear targets, Mangud, you will never know if the instruction and experiences in the classroom resulted in bullseye or if they missed the mark completely. So, there are many areas to assess for the learning targets like the performance, the product development, and, and many more. So these are the example class. We have the target area, then the behavior that you want to do or to um, know by your student and the kinds of the or the assessment that you are going to do so the knowledge we have reasoning performance product development and attitudes like for example in the knowledge you are going to spell word correctly so what are the possible assessment that you are going to use we have like quizzes essays or questioning another we have the performance class speak foreign uh, language so the assessment is for you able to know if they can speak uh, you have to use the assessment of observations and of course with the rubrics have here the three building blocks in objectives so remember class that you have already your uh, target of areas so teacher uh, create specific classroom objectives that are based or state the standard or benchmark. So, well written objectives are made up of three building blocks. We have conditions, behavior, and criteria. So, number one, the conditions define the materials that will be available or unavailable when the objective assessed. It is stated given or not given. Okay, for example, of the conditions objectives class is like without the use of calculator. We have also given a map of Europe or the Philippines. So list the provinces under the Mindanao. Or another is given 12 double digit numbers. So remember that na with the use or given a map. So yung na ang conditions objective. We have also the number two, the behavior. Is a verb that describes an observable activity. It is stated as action verb. Like for example, we have sold, compare, or list. Or example, we have explain or identify or define the word uh, formative assessment or uh, explain the process of using the formative tools assessment. So these are the kinds of the behavior objectives. Number three, criterion. So refer to as degree. It is a standard that is used to measure whether or not the objective has been achieved. It is stated might in percentage, time limit, or other measure of mastery. For example, class, we have given a list of 20 states. That is condition. The student will identify, so that is behavior, and at least 15 of the corresponding state capital. So that is criteria. So after the objectives are written class, the nakai specific objective, it is easy for you to create a corresponding assessment item. So, for example, class, your subject is for the history and you discuss the introduction of history. So, your objectives is number one, you are going to define, define the word history. Number two, uh, compare or explain 
the history and historiography and number three you are going to write uh, write your own word or definition of the word history so from that objective class so of course so your assessment is number one butang ni mo dito history what is history number two compare history and historiography by your own understanding so ingun ana na siya and just uh, say clearly what the child will be learning in all subject areas like reading mathematics uh, science, physical education, and etc. So, learning targets class promote consistency in teaching and learning. Using this or using the learning targets, the teacher will be able to assess student performance throughout the year. So, it is a frequent checks of assessment provide the teachers with information and skills and concept that maybe have to be covered again as children mature now let's proceed to the levels of assessment so remember class that high quality assessment plays a very important role in improving teaching and learning so it provides a useful measures of student performance so the attainment of learning outcomes so ang iyang attainment ni mo, so defined in the standard shall be the basis for the quality assurance of learning using formative assessment so they shall be the focus of the summative assessment and shall be the basis for grading at the end of instruction so attainment of learning outcomes class this will be uh, like at the end of the year na okay so the learning outcomes are defined by level we have the knowledge process or skill understanding and products or the performance so these outcomes are reflected in the class record and shall be given corresponding percentage weight as follows we have the level of assessment and the percentage weight so same is at a class for example we have the performance 60% and the V10, we have 20%, and the uh, quarterly exam is 20%, a total of 100%. So, kanisha is, uh, muna siya ang gigamit sa DepEd. We have the knowledge of 15%, process or skills 25%, understanding 30%, products or performance 30%, and a total of 100%. Define each level of assessment. We have number one, the knowledge, the substantive content of the curriculum, like the facts and information. So number two, the process or skills, uh, cognitive operations that performs in facts and information. So this number two class, the process is um, a good example is for the sciences. We have kind of mga laboratories. So Number three, understanding enduring big ideas, principles, and generalization inherent to the discipline. Okay, example of this understanding class uh, in your own understanding or like in your own idea, what is so? Muna siya. Or we have products or performances. Real life application of understanding as evidenced by the student's performance of authentic tasks. So, for example, class we have in TLE, like sa cooking, sa agriculture, sa so yung ananay mga performances, or for example, in teaching. So, so sa inyuhang fourth year class na amoy a uh, teacher, a uh, student teacher, you act like a teacher. So, that is the example of products or performances. So those are the level of assessment. So remember class that the performance or the product is the highest level of assessment. So we have here the levels of proficiency. We have beginning. So there is a corresponding percentage. So naputai developing, approaching a pro proficiency, proficient, and I you are advanced 
if you receive 90% and above. So that's all for today's class. Uh, thank you for listening.